Manny Matsakis, the head football coach at Defiance College. And I would like to welcome you to the very first episode of the Swarm and Shoot podcast. In this podcast, what we are doing is we are creating a an insider's perspective for you, our fan base, for recruits to take a look at, and that would be in Defiance County and our surrounding counties and fans coast to coast. So with all that being said, it's all about our program, our football program here at Defiance College. And when we're looking at that, there are so many aspects of this program that I'm excited to present to you. And the, the format will be, in, in other than this particular episode, I will always be the interviewer talking to people and we will bring on former players, people in the community and the surrounding communities that are supportive of Defiance College. And um, it's really how I look at it is six degrees of separation. What is it we can bring in for you that can give you the insights of why Defiance College football is so special and being a yellow jacket is, uh, in, in my estimation, something big. And um, we just want to share that with you. So without further ado, I want to make sure that we give you the best product you could ask for and make sure that on iTunes, you get a chance to get on there and subscribe to this podcast as well as make a comment on this podcast because the more of that we get the better chance we have to get on new and noteworthy on the itunes ratings and um, that's what drives everything for us so um, we're excited about this and uh, we will get started in a second after this word from our sponsor This is Manny Matsakis, the head football coach of the Defiance College Yellow Jackets. Defiance College is located in beautiful Northwest Ohio. We have a tremendous campus here and we're led by Dr. Rich Ann Mankey, our president. Her team has created a renaissance here in recent years that has built our reputation on academics and student life. We have a wonderful opportunity here for you to find your life's calling. Make sure for you to become a Yellow Jacket, you take the time to contact one of our friendly admissions counselors so they can walk you through the process to find your life's calling and become a Yellow Jacket. Welcome back, and this is Manny once again, and what I'd like to do right now is introduce you to the fellow that's going to be the interviewer in this podcast today, in this first episode, and that's Lynn Grohl. How are you doing, Lynn? I'm good, Coach. How are you? Awesome. Well, you know, the thing is, we've gotten to know each other, know each other since I got here uh, early in August. In fact, I think we were talking in July right after I took the job, and I was in Philadelphia. We had done a phone conversation um, regarding taking this position and we've gotten to know each other very well uh, he's been part of our golf tournament and been you know really supporting our program through the through our local newspaper and um, you know we're excited to have such a good relationship with the media here and um, you know here we go, Lynn. You take over. All right. I feel I felt like you were going to interview me today. Switch it up a little bit. <laughs> you probably tired of all my questions. Oh no, we're having fun with this. <laughs> yeah. This will be great. Yeah, take me back to all your other coaching stops. How has that helped you in the role that you are now in at Defiance College here? Well, you know, Lynn, as I look at it, I'm very fortunate to. Um, there's there's a bit of a pattern in each of the stops I've had along the way. Uh, and and the pattern has always been uh, change the culture, turn around a football program. And it started like my very first coaching job as an assistant in Barberton, Ohio. Uh, got there with the head coach, Don Alt. And Don was had been the head coach at Slippery Rock University and had decided he was going to coach, he was going to finish up his career coaching high school football. And Barberton, where the Magics are there, um, has a storied past. You've got guys like uh, Bo Schembechler is from Barberton, John Makovic. Uh, there, there's some tremendous football background there. You know, Rudy Sharkey was the former head coach at one time and really elevated that program to a totally different level. 
And it was exciting for me that I got there and I was working with a mentor that understood the turnaround. I think the year before we got there, they had won three games maybe. And then the very first year, we won seven games. And Barberton was a big basketball town, and I'm sure still is. But football started to gain some momentum there. So, And then we turned it around. So that was one. That was the one and only season where I'd started out at a high school level, and then the next year I went to Kansas State. And within a year of being at Kansas State, we hired Bill Snyder, and he's obviously a Hall of Fame coach, and uh, just retired last year. And we embarked on what became the greatest turnaround in the history of college football. There, we had some great coaches on the staff. It was you know guys like Bob Stoops was our secondary coach. Um, I mean, who will be a Hall of Fame coach himself. You know, we, we had a really good group there, and you learned in a very short period of time how to turn that program around. So you go from there. Then I went to Hofstra in Long Island, New York, which wasn't necessarily a turnaround, but it was interesting because the year before I got there, we were Division Three, and the year I entered, we, we went right from Division Three to what was then called 1AA. So we were going to another level without scholarships, and we went 8-2. and two. So to me, that was like remarkable, against all odds, as our head coach Joe Gardy used to say. It's like, hey, we're going to do this. And, and we did it. That was a fun three years. And then I had a chance to go to back to K-State as a coordinator from there, Emporia State, that had one winning season in the previous 10 years before I'd gotten there. And all of a sudden, within four years, we march up and, um, you know, shoot, we're within – top 10 in the nation in Division Two had a Harlan Hill award winner, which is the Heisman Trophy for D2. And then, um, you know, that was awesome. Went to Wyoming, offensive coordinator, Texas Tech with Mike Leach, head coach Texas State in San Marcos, Texas. And then, um, shoot, after that, um, I did a few things in the media, you know, and, uh, and, and then I – spent a few years out of coaching and went up to Canada and, and uh, during one season became the offensive coordinator there with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And uh, we did a nice job that season, really during the season, turning our fortunes around. And then took a high school job after that in North Carolina. That was a, a place that is very near and dear to my heart because my son Eli was born there. And, um, it was just a really cool community, and we went to the playoffs three years in a row, and that was a fun um, run for me. Went to Bethany College after that in Kansas. Uh, shoot, we uh, you know, and we go from two and nine to seven and four. Boom, quick turnaround there. Went out to Widener University to uh, as the offensive coordinator in Philadelphia to work with a good friend of mine, Mike Kelly, who had been the head coach at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, um, you know, we had, we had really did some nice things there, establishing some things in that program. And he, he's a fantastic coach and has done a, a heck of a job in his career himself. Uh, you know, so then all of a sudden I'm here in Defiance America. Here we are. Yeah. In the, in the few short months you've been here, how often do you lean on some of those facets that coach Schneider, um, taught you at K state and Manhattan? Well, a lot. I mean, there's quite a bit of that because it's like, I think, I think in coaching, you're a product of all the places you've been and you learn what to do, maybe what you may not want to do for it. Cause everything's a little different. It's like what I noticed is here in defiance, we have such a tremendous community where a lot of colleges don't have that. And so here is an opportunity for us to build something really special and, and draw upon that. And I saw what we did at Kansas State with Coach Snyder was very similar. Manhattan, Kansas was a very small town in college that you had to like build it up. But we had a connection with, um, you know, the Midwest, I guess. You know, my, you know, the state of Kansas, they're either a KU fan or a K-State fan. And K-State is the... Uh, you think of it this way, it's where the ag school is. Um, it's, a, it's a place that 
veterinary medicine is going on, where KU is physicians, lawyers, those types of things. So you get two very different fan bases. So being young and having to learn from him and others on the staff, uh, there were so many things. You're taking notes. Every day was literally like it was a a Ph.D. course and turning around a program. So I, I draw upon that often. Probably, probably more than anything else is I like, I think our coaches enjoy some of the stories of being there and how it relates to here because uh, the size of the school has never really mattered. It's more the people you work with and the environment that you set up and your expectations. So I think that's what happened. I learned from Coach Snyder. Now we have an opportunity to do the same thing here. Yeah. Is there a common theme from all these places to turn around a program that you're kind of doing here as well? I'd say the common theme is you have to take in everything that is going on around you and and basically stretch it. It's like you want to take your resources and amplify them because you may not have, not every place has huge budgets or great facilities or anything like that. Everyone has their limitations, so to speak. But you've got to take those things that other people think are your limitations and utilize them in a fashion where people are like, wow, I can't believe they just did that with those resources that they have. But I'm looking at it that the glass is half full and every place you go, you want to be able to build off of that. And I think the one common theme in every place I've been fortunate to turn around has been the people people that came in and supported you were there through thick and thin and helped you establish yourself as, as a championship caliber program. Give me the the current state that you feel like the program is in at this juncture. Well, I would say right now we have gotten ourselves to a point where it's like we came in that first year and I affectionately call that year zero. It's like, you're just getting your feet uh, just you're, you're trying to set your your feet into the ground and figure out the lay of the land because I mean remember I got here August seventh and we started practice that next day so it was it was a function of what is Defiance College about how can we sell this and um, and and I think that was the whole first year and and literally we didn't have any players that that my staff had recruited. So we were just inheriting everybody and we wanted to make them feel special to be in our program because I feel once you get somewhere, it's like they're your players the moment you take the job. It's not they're theirs or anything. So we wanted to take that and also engage our alumni um, to support the program because I believe here specifically, we, we have the potential for a very, very strong alumni fan base and support. So with that being said, that was year zero. And then after the season, I hired some new coaches in here who everyone's going to get a chance to meet through the next few podcasts. And we, we engaged, even though we were late to the show, in a very, very aggressive recruiting campaign and um and we're excited about where we're going with that to really head into year one which will be this fall yeah what can you sell your recruits on people in the community about this program right now coach i think number one i think we have to sell our coaching staff uh, and that is why and what attracts a lot of these players here i mean you ha- it's all about people and then within that there's such a loyalty to the college and the community here that is so important that as we put this together, that we're always selling those things. Like when we have a recruiting weekend, for instance, we will get uh, former All-Americans to come up and address those recruits that are literally coming coast to coast. You know, we, we recruit heavy locally, but then after you get everybody you can locally, then we're going everywhere. I mean, we've got kids from the state of Washington, Idaho, uh, you know, a lot from Texas and and Florida, Georgia, Alabama. I mean, the list goes on and on where we're getting these guys that are not from this black swamp region. And so it's like, as I, as I see this, you know, we're, we're putting that together and we're able to sell that to them. It's like, here's a former all American that did some great things. So we sell that, uh, Kirstie Mack, 
comes in town who runs the Visitors Bureau here in Defiance and does, I think, a fantastic job of just saying, here's all the stuff that's going on here in Defiance. And, and, and I think parents are shocked. I mean, recruits are like, holy smokes. It's amazing what this town has to offer these guys uh, once they get here. So I think that is what we're selling uh, from a community aspect, from our coaching aspect. And the third part of this is we have a fantastic college with professors and leadership in our administration that is here to see us succeed. And we, we, we get a lot of, you know, we, I present ideas to people and uh, very rarely do we ever get any back off on them it's like just go so we're we're hitting this thing full speed i i'm fortunate to have a president like dr Mankey here and um, she's got great vice presidents on board with her to help us out and i think when you look at that you know, it's like I feel very comfortable walking into Dr. Caldwell's office and say, hey, let's talk about the academic side. Can you how can we make this happen so these players are successful when they're here? You know, and Lisa Marslick's over here in the VP and, you know, I can talk to her about retention and just all the stuff that we have here, how we can engage that to keep to make this program a premier program in college football. Biggest difference from last August when you got here and to this point right now? Biggest difference is our coaching staff. Yeah. Uh, because these new guys that we've been able to get on board, um, they're fantastic football coaches. I have known all of them that I've hired at some point along the way. Either I wanted to hire them or I work with them or somebody that I trusted work with them and uh, the recommendations were tremendous. So I think that's the biggest difference. I think that and the opportunity to be out of the box and stretch what we're doing and create something special. That's what's different. I think when recruits are coming on campus, they don't know what it was like before. It's just now. So to me, we we're on a mission to create this championship program here And, uh, you know, we're doing it every day. Finishing up here, what is next coming up this fall for the program and then even down the road that that you feel like is is on the is coming up for you guys? Well, I I think what's next for the program is we will continue to communicate with those recruits we have that are committed and everything is set up, ready to go. Um, And then we are putting together a really i think a fantastic training camp program that will teach these young players because if you look at it it's like 80 percent of this roster is going to be newcomers this year so i want to get them to understand the region the college what their responsibility is when they're out there representing defiance college you know, from a football standpoint and as a student athlete. So it's like there's a lot of education that goes on a training camp that is not X's and O's. So we want to make sure that those young men understand um, basically the torch that we're passing to them that is so important here in this region. They have to represent this region in a way that is above reproach. So there's a lot of education in that. And then from the the other side of it, as the season comes up, we're excited about it. I mean, it, it, it's a pretty cool deal. We've, we've created some events and things around the season. We've got the Swarm and Shoot weekend coming up, uh, which will be on the 19th of September. It'll be a Thursday night game at Defiance High School, which will be awesome under the lights because you know that that'll be a good atmosphere there and then the next day we've got the golf tournament the swarm and shoot golf tournament and then we we can we wrap up the weekend on a, on a saturday on the 21st and we put together our uh, touchdown lottery which uh, is our biggest fundraiser that we would do in football so those are some of the things going on we're excited about the season because we have so much opportunity ahead of us because all 10 of those teams when you look at them, they, they're they all teams that we have not beaten last year. So everyone is a clean slate. So let's see how far we can go this year to close the gap on the opponents this fall and keep improving the program. So, I mean, that's what's happening right now. There's We're juggling a lot of balls throughout the summer to have a successful campaign in the fall. And, and really, that's 
you know, that, that's what you have to do when you hit season one, which is what's coming up this fall. Yeah. And even in year four, you have a big uh, newcomer to the schedule in Mount Union. I, I know we've talked about that. Yeah, that, that, that'll that be fun. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's one of those things we had scheduled that, I think, back in uh, October. And uh, we have a home and home with them. So the freshmen coming in right now, they will be in a position when they're seniors, we will play an alliance. And the following year, they'll come uh, the the Mount Union will come here the following year. So it'll be a home and home. Excited about that. Have some other people on the schedule. I think we've got after, next year in 2020, we've got Capital is coming here. Then we're going there. We've got Adrian on the schedule in the future, uh, scheduling them to a long-term contract as well. So it's I think it's fun to see who we're playing. And, and really, we can't control anything but us improving, and that's that's the collision course for the next four years to be able to represent well when we go to Alliance Ohio. Sounds good. Appreciate it, Coach. Yeah, well, thanks, Lynn. And, you know, as, as, as we close some remarks here at the end of this podcast, I, I, I can't tell you how important it is for our fan base to get on here and subscribe in iTunes. And we will, and, and if you're not on our Swarm and Shoot Facebook page, please like that page because that will help us get information to you because there's a lot, new, a lot of new things coming down the road for you, and that's how we'll be able to communicate that to you. And then the next few episodes are all with our assistant coaches, and I will be interviewing a few people, each one of them, along the way. Next episode, which is episode two, we'll have our defensive coordinator, Michael Starkey, who's from the great state of Mississippi. And um, I, I think you'll enjoy his energy, his passion, and, and his commitment to helping us create this championship program. So thank you so much, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.